This is um, my true testimony of how I met the true Son of God, Jesus Christ. Um, I've always been searching. There was something in me that wanted the truth, and it was important to keep on searching. And God sent a man into my life to tell me and talk to me about spirituality, which I was very interested in. My ears were wide open, and I was very open to hearing what he had to say. And as the uh, conversation progressed, he started to talk about God. And I just thought, well, God, everybody talks about God at some point in their lives. And I was okay with that. And then he talked about Jesus. And that's when I started to become irritated and thought to myself, how could this man who is obviously intelligent, compassionate, um, be so passionate about believing in Jesus. It made no sense to me at all. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but I continued to listen and it was for me the polite thing to do. And then eventually the evening came to a close and he went home and it left me on my own at home thinking about the conversation. And I was intrigued as much as I was irritated, still thinking to myself that it was ridiculous. So eventually I went to bed and with all these thoughts in my head just lay there looking up into the ceiling and, and I had to know because as I said I was searching for the truth and so I very simply said God if you are real you prove yourself to me and uh, I didn't feel um, belligerent um, or anything it was just that I needed to know I had to have my own irrefutable evidence and no sooner has I said the last word and I heard a voice and I knew in my heart and my spirit it was God and he gave me a simple instruction to follow which I, I followed through and then went to sleep and the next day was a Saturday so all of that took place on October the 31st 1997 so on the Saturday morning I had a few things planned and one of them was to go and visit a friend. So I got myself ready and went down the stairs to the lounge and as I looked into the lounge I thought I could see a mist and I thought to myself at the time what an amazing atmospheric. So I stepped down into my lounge and looked around the room and just it was normal, the, you, everything was in its place but there were things there that I didn't like and I, I just thought that some, for some reason I had mistakenly purchased but I didn't have time then to deal with that so I went about my business and eventually visited on a friend and told her all about what I was experiencing and she said it's God and I thought well last night in my spirit I heard a voice um, and I, I felt that it was God so I left for home and just as I was approaching where I was living, I heard that voice again and the voice said, go and buy some bin liners. I thought, well, strange thing, but okay. So I did and got myself home with the bin liners, closed the front door behind me and stepped into my lounge and once again looked around with everything as, it, as I'd left it. But I thought, I just don't like that picture or this ornament. So I tore off uh, a bin liner and I started putting things in it and eventually I had two bin liners full of things that I just wasn't comfortable with and I remember thinking that I was really glad that it would be a Monday soon when the refuse would be collected. So I thought well I'll take myself into the town and I went to a bookstore and purchased a book and the title of the book was Blessings and Curses You Can Choose and it was written by Derek Prince. Now, it wasn't a very big book and I sat down to read it and it was very interesting and the one particular thing that has always stayed with me is that the book describes that everything you speak is either a blessing or a curse and it talked about the power of the tongue and I just thought well that's, that's really quite amazing and then right at the end of the book there was a, a short prayer and it, it, it basically um, talked about the prayer, that it was a prayer of salvation. And I was curious, and once more it talked about Jesus, and I kept thinking, how can 
this be true? How could Jesus be the Son of God? Who is Jesus? And I'd almost become comfortable with the Word of God, sorry, with the Word God, but the Word Jesus, I, I just didn't know. And I wasn't sure about at all. So to myself, I read those words and I thought, well, what harm, what harm will it do if I, if I say them just to see because I was searching for the truth. So I started reading the prayer and a little way down towards the end of the prayer, it made a suggestion that you declared yourself as a sinner and asked God to forgive you of your sins. And I just thought, I'm not a sinner. That's, that's, that's crazy. Um, but I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do what it says. And I remember um, declaring sin, uh, witchcraft as a sin and um, lying and thieving. And little incidences were brought to mind, like things that I'd probably taken from my younger brother in my youth. But it didn't, it, it didn't mean much to me. And so I came to the end of the prayer, and then at the end it said, and by faith I take Jesus as my saviour. And I thought, well, I, ca I don't know how I can believe this, but if it's the truth, then I, I want to know if it's the truth. So I was open and I just continued and came to the end of the prayer and just said Amen. I remember finishing the prayer and feeling so tired and I looked at the time, it wasn't particularly late that day, but I took myself to bed for an early night and I was thinking to myself, Jesus, who are you? Who are you? Why did I say that, those words that they call it a prayer? The uh, prayer of salvation. And that's when I felt his presence. And I remember reading in the book about the Holy Spirit and I, I felt this presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just did what the book had said and to welcome the Holy Spirit into my heart and to accept that Jesus is my savior. So that would have been the 1st of November of 1997. And to this day, which is January 2010, I can say that Jesus has never let me down and I know he never will. And I do believe that you're listening to this little video clip because you've been drawn, because you're searching for the truth. And there would be no reason for me to lie or exaggerate, but from that day that I, I took Jesus as my saviour, he changed me and he changed me from the inside. He changed my mind everything that how I felt and thought and he moved me in a totally new direction and the word says that once you have taken Jesus as your saviour you become a new person that the old man is just forgotten lost gone away and that is what has happened and that is why I can say that I am a born-again Christian I took Jesus Christ as my saviour and I can honestly say that it is the only way to God through Jesus. If you want a relationship with God, then you have to go to Jesus and take him as your saviour. And that moment will be the moment that you'll always remember and it will change the rest of your life. So if you want to, join with me in prayer as I pray for you. Pray for your salvation. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I raise every person that is listening to this broadcast to you. I thank you for their lives. I know you have brought them to listen to these words because they're curious and they want to know the truth and they, they want you in their lives. So I pray salvation over them. I bind the blinding spirits that prevent them from hearing the truth of the word of the gospel that you, Jesus, are the Christ, the Saviour of all mankind. And I pray now as you listen, that if you want Jesus in your heart, because you want a relationship with God, then say, I take you, Jesus, as my Saviour. By faith I do this because I don't know you, but I've heard about you, and I want to know the truth. If you say those words, he will come to you and he will stay with you and he will never forsake you.